Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Now, in the last episode, I finally got my transport hub up and running with several trucks delivering screws, cables, and quick wire, while also taking back in fuel to fuel all of those trucks from the oil processing plant many, many kilometers away. We also unlocked Tier 7 and Tier 8, at least we can now see them, so we have a clear path of where we're going to be progressing, with aluminum production being the next nut to crack. Before we can actually crack that nut, though, we're going to have to do a few other odd jobs that I've left behind me. Some classic for now projects that we finally have to kind of get back to. The main ones being kind of the more obscure goods, such as crystal oscillators, high-speed connectors, AI limiters, heavy modular frames. A few of those things, those little obscure things that we got to kind of get work on as we lead into the Tier 7 kind of milestones. All right, so... Today, I'm really looking forward to today's episode because we're going to be doing high-speed connectors and AI limiters, which is going to be fairly easy. We'll talk through it when we get to it, but also on the right side of the screen, we have hard drive hunting. So I'm going to start exploring a lot more of the map because I've barely explored any of it. It's kind of crazy I've gone this far without exploring it, but a lot of people had written in the previous comments saying, you got to go out and find more hard drives. Now that you're getting into tier 7, the further milestones you unlock, you know, the more the RNG is going to punish you. Um, for the different things that you want to end up getting in the mom. So that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to go out and go hard drive hunting. I'll probably try to cut through that a little bit so it's not just me walking around for ages, but I haven't explored this map before. Never done it. I've been up in the desert before because I've started there, but this center of the map, I've seen pictures. I've never walked around it or anything, and I've no idea where the hard drive locations are. I'm going to be using my trusty little beeper thing here to go and find them. And then I'll just be cutting to whenever we kind of find different things and having a look around the landscape. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be a nice little breakup from just building factories all the time. But then we're going to get straight back and start adding the fuel overflow system to this area here. I'm still using those fluid buffers and I'm flushing them constantly. A lot of people are like, hey, why don't you just make refineries that sink petroleum coke, blah, 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 blah. I appreciate that. I've mentioned this so, so many times that this is temporary and... I'm going to get refiners, refineries in there to make fuel, and then I can increase turbo fuel production. So that's the plan, but I appreciate... I've said it so many times, I feel like people aren't listening. But no, I do appreciate people saying that. It's the obvious solution. I guess you're like, oh, instead of going up and manually flushing it, you could have done that temporarily. It's like, I get it, I get it. Um, and then the last thing is going to be building up that train station. So at the moment, this place looks like a joke. Um, so we're going to make that look a little bit better. So let's get to it. So the first thing... It's going to be high-speed connectors. Now, while I'd like to, you know, obviously build factories dedicated to all of these things, we do have Circuit City here, where we have five manufacturers, four of which are powered on right now, and all of which are making computers, although computers are actually backed up. So we're going to build an awesome sink into this place as well in just a second. But I was having a look at the recipe for high-speed connectors. And what you need is quick wire, cable, and circuit boards. And all of that stuff gets delivered here. So what I'm going to do is just hop up, have a look. So we've got cable, we've got plastic, screws, and circuit boards. And they're made in manufacturers. So before I switch the recipe for this, I'm just going to head down this way. Go upstairs and readjust the logistics of this place so we can make high-speed connectors just in the background. Because what I want to do with them, I don't know how needed they are later on down the line. But right in front of me is the mom. If we want to get power poles Mark III, we need some high-speed connectors and a few other things as well. So I'm just going to cut the logistics here just a little bit. Put down another splitter. Is that right? Yeah, I'm just putting that there just mostly to remember how this will be laid out in future. I technically don't need it that way, but just to keep things kind of consistent. It'll make sense in a second. Anyway, we're going to go with a Mark III lift. Just like so. And then Tier three belts that can just feed right about there. And then bring this over here. This is where Quickwire actually comes in. Alright, so the Quickwire that's coming in from the train station above is going to feed to the assemblers which are making circuit boards. They're going to feed to those first, but at the very end of it, extra Quickwire, I suppose, will kind of come out this way and make its way down the elevator downstairs to that manufacturer. Seeing as it gets everything else we need anyway, this should not be a problem, and it should just end up making high-speed connector for connectors for us in the background. So let's just quickly change the recipe here. Actually, you know what would be good? I'll take these computers out. 
And we'll let it just take its final batch of stuff. If I could do that. I'll take the 200 plastic there. So that'll just feed down. And then I'll just take the plastic out of it. And we'll leave the screws where they are. No big deal. Okay. Pretty much all in. Oh, it's making one last computer. I'm not going to let it. All right, so we'll just switch this now to high-speed connectors. So it's going to take 210 quick wire. It's a lot. It's probably more than this factor is really capable of doing, but it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we'll be making some in the background. That's all that matters. I only need a couple hundred for a little while. But eventually, we'll just up the amount of quick wire we deliver, deliver here. Excuse me. Sorry, something else I forgot to mention is I can't believe it, but I'm sick again. My nose is completely blocked over. I've been sick five times, I think, this year. And possibly, I don't know, eight times in my entire life. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on this year. But um, I got COVID back in March. So it's like ever since then, I keep getting sick. So I don't know if there's something wrong with me. But I'm sure everything's fine. It's only a very, very minor head cold. It's And actually, every time I've been sick, it's been getting not as bad each time. So at least that's good. Anyways, I digress. So right, the quick wire is coming on in. The high-speed connectors, is that coming down nicely? It is. That should be fine. So we'll start making those. But we have to actually clear the belts of computers. So let's do that next. So the belts of computers roll along here, all the way along here, and then take a left turn into this room here on the end. And a while ago, I never even mentioned it, I did build an awesome sink here for specifically all of the circuit boards that are getting made in this room that were just getting backed up as well. The reason I made so many computers is because we wanted to make adaptive control units. But right now, right in front of me, I don't have anything, any use for the computers. I know eventually what we're going to need is the radio control units require computers. So obviously we'll send computers, oscillators, and aluminum casing to go make these in the future. But for now, what we can do is just start putting this somewhere else. So I'm just gonna clear my inventory for a minute. Um, grab another box here or whatever, just cut that. Say goodnight. Get rid of these things, they don't need to be here. And we just need to make a spillover for both computers, high-speed connectors, and circuit boards to all go into an awesome sync together. Should be totally easy. Alright, so I've dumped my inventory in there. I'm just going to pick up the computers. The computers are going to put in here. Nothing goes to waste. I'm going to cut this back here. All good. Take away the rest of this, get rid of this. Alright, cool. So, now we can lay it out a bit better. I'm working with very constrained space here. Let's go to about there. Need another one, and another one, if we can afford it. Yes, we can. Excellent. Now, I can put the computers back in here. Okay, that's fine by me. I'll keep a few for myself. Actually, I guess I probably have them in the other box, right? So let's just grab these back. Yep, that's all good. Okay. So now we've got three boxes. This is going to be computers, this is going to be high-speed connectors, and this is going to be overflow. So we'll open up a splitter, switch it to a smart splitter, put it in front of the middle one, rotate it so it's facing me, tell the right output, which has new UI by the way, to be uh, computers, center output to be high-speed connectors, and left output to be overflow. By the way, I did see the news. The blueprints are on the way. I'm super, super excited for that because not just for the factory building, but actually for the cosmetics that I end up doing. When you're building, you know that railway bridge I have and I've got like lights going all the way down it. Like I only ever put five of them down because they take me so long to make them. These like big giant poles for lights and stuff. But now I can just blueprint the crap out of it. I can't wait to do that and build up a series of blueprints. And I actually really like the implementation they've gone for. I'm a bit of a game design purist. And I can totally see where they're coming from with the idea that if you were blueprinting massive areas at big factories or something, that would be... It would actually remove gameplay rather than improve it. Um, so I do agree with them on that. So I think their implementation is quite clever, quite good. Should make it kind of fun snapping different blueprints together and trying to make it all work. Still gives you a bit to do. Gives you that satisfaction when you're done with it, I think. Um, don't know when you actually get a designer or what tier or anything that comes into, uh, into play or anything like that. But looking forward to it. I think it's going to be really good. Um... And also faster zip lining, which I actually really like zip lining, so that'd be good too. All right, so we've laid this out to be correct. Let's just now get this belt and dump it in that way. Okay. 
So this is going to be overflow, right? Overflow. But before we actually join up the overflow, we need another thing, a merger. So this will have to be pretty close, actually. This, this particular thing might have to move forward, thinking about it. Let's just see. Can I feed in there? Uh, all right, we'll just move this forward. Right, so merger with its input. Oh, sorry, its output on the left. Okay. And then I'm going to get a faster belt, maybe the Mark IV to lead in there. We're going to get a Mark IV belt and split, get another smart splitter. So this is where our circuit boards are trying to come out. We'll get this uh, smart splitter to rotate away from it. So its input's correct, so... Mark IV belt in. The overflow of the circuit boards will then feed into the merger. And that will feed into the overflow over there. Alright, almost done. Alright, so circuit boards are going back upstairs, which is where they need to go. So this is almost correct. So center output is going to be circuit. And the right output is overflow. Hmm. Some of it came out there for a second. I don't know why that would happen, but okay. Um, and that's correct, yeah. So this is now getting a bit of both. Excellent. Yep, all good. So now we just need to put down the actual awesome sink again. Now this room, eventually, I'll probably expand this room out at some point in the future. But, you know, for now, this is totally fine. <laughs> This place is definitely going to grow to make high-speed connectors more full-time, I think. Rather than just changing one machine, but, you know, it seems to work. Alright, so we'll just hook this up to power. There's an outlet there. Collapse this down. Collapse this down. And there we go. So now we have a storage container for computers, which is just full. We have a storage container for high-speed connectors. And then an overflow container, which is taking in circuit boards, computers, and high-speed connectors if this ever gets full. And sending it into an awesome sink. How good is that? Right? That was nice and quick. <laughs> it was actually way easier than I thought. Holy crap. 23 tickets. I'll take it. Uh, okay. So there we go. So hopefully everyone's caught up on that. So let's have a look just out here now if these belts are starting to clear themselves. Yes, they have. Excellent. So are we seeing any high-speed connectors yet? We are. There we go. The first few are coming out now. So they're just going to be a little bit backed up while they get fed into the correct storage and get fed into the... Um, Awesome sync, obviously, but yep, yeah, seems to be working just fine. Probably going to be a little low on quick wire because there is a fairly decent demand for qui um, circuit boards from this place, and this gets the this has sort of priority for the quick wire. So we'll see how that all shakes out. But as long as we're making some in the background, uh, I'm happy. Okay, um, so yeah, let's get out of here. That's that done then. High speed connectors done. Now, the next one's going to be AI limiters. This is going to be a bit more of a manual job, even more than that. Uh, basically, back at the base that I have, where we first started out the game, uh, I've basically set up a couple of storage containers there that are going to... Oh, nice, the train is right here. That's what I was hoping for. I could just ride the train back myself. Ugh, there we go. It's just unloading all of its stuff right now. But yeah, anyway, so just going to take this train all the way back down to base basically down here and then we should be able to just set up AI limiters in the background and then we can go exploring um, so something else I've been making in the background was heavy modular frames again just doing it at my sort of temporary manufacturer site that's over here Should be able to just pick up a few. So I just loaded this thing with encased industrial beams. It has 1,500 in there. And there we go. Hmm, I'm pretty full up actually thinking about it. Can we just uh, store something else in there for now? Oh my god, I've got tons of heavy modular frames. Probably don't need all these, but I want to be... I strongly advise you to harvest this specimen. I want to be um, building radar towers and kind of exploring the map that way too. And that'll give you an indication of where hard drives are. 
Alrighty, I'm here. So I've basically just set this up super quick. I've got a storage container now with 24,000 quick wire, about 6,000 copper sheeting, feeding into one assembler that is now making AI limiters. We've done this before. It's exactly how I did it before. I've just been getting a bit low on them, so I thought I should just have it on the go in the background. So it's just feeding into this box. This box is not feeding into that. It's just going to stay there for now. So I've just made three. Literally just set it up right now. So we're going to let that do its thing in the background. I also forgot to mention, or it didn't really stop when I was going by in the train, but... At the end of the last episode, I showed off little scenes, sort of like cutscenes of this place. I've added a roof to it, I've added that upper floor and walled the whole thing off, added some windows and some gates for the trains that are coming in and out, and then the signs downstairs. I remember saying like, oh, I don't know what these signs are actually going to say or be used for. Uh, so that's, that station's not doing anything, so it's got zero trucks and zero trains on it, which is the two little numbers there, and it doesn't have an assigned good, so it just has an X. Whereas this one, for instance, is getting in 480 quick wire per minute via one truck, and then one train is taking it away. So I think that's a decent little system to use, because then if I ever add another train that's picking up quick wire, I can sort of then map it out a little bit. And a great comment, actually, I always forget the commenter's names, but a great comment I saw in the previous episode was that uh, you can actually just interact with the train station to see specifically the different routes on trains, so you don't have to wait or like look for them to come by or wonder if they're on their route correctly or not. You can actually just access the timetable from any train station, so that was really, really helpful. So, good to know. Alrighty, so that is AI limiters basically done in the background. Now we can go hard drive hunting, although the sun is going down. So what I was thinking of doing first was heading back out to the east to this radar tower here. This radar tower is kind of built with most of its circle off on the edge of the map. So I was thinking of just pushing it further forward and then trying to keep it connected. So what I'm going to do is drive out to the sulfur refinery and then drag a sort of a, a cable that leads all the way out to here. I think this place is called Blue Crater, by the way. Um, I don't know where people see those names, but online there's like a map that someone made of like all the different biomes in the game. Uh, and it's on the website Satisfactory Calculator and SatisfactoryMap.com. So you can check them out there. But I was wondering if, if it ever actually acknowledges those names in-game. I don't think it does. They might be just community names. But I do think the developers have called it that too. Anyways, I digress. The point is that the map is broken into all these different biomes. And I think this one's called Blue Crater. You can actually name your towers. So I'm probably going to name them after the biome that they cover. And this should tell me how many hard drives are sort of in this area. But I want to uncover more of the map. I'm probably going to go out here, push north and then push west and come back around to the old processing plant, which is where I need to go. So uncover this sort of middle section of the map. Should be a pretty nice little drive. So I've just left my car downstairs, and we'll get going now. But I'll just be making frequent cuts here so as not to bore you with just too much driving. Um, and just when I get to new territories and new areas, we should be able to see it then. Oh, actually, before I go, should prepare a few different things. I might leave off some stuff that I don't need with me. And just make sure I've got... Yeah, so I've got biofuel. Do I have biomass? I've got biomass in the car. Yeah, so that should be okay. Because obviously you want to set up biomass burners to unlock the hard drives, certain hard drives. Yeah, we've got loads of material for that, so that seems fine. I have a pretty eclectic inventory here, so I think I should have enough for whatever gets thrown my way. And I can always put stuff in the boot as well, I guess. Um, just stuff that I might not need. Yeah. Alright, cool. Yeah, sun's setting. Galaxy's out. Let's get going. Alrighty, so I've made it to the radar tower in Blue Crater. And this is pretty much where I want to push it up to. I mean, I'd like to go a little bit further, but this is kind of a nice area for it. So I'll probably just stick it here so it's not in the gas, cl gas clouds just a little bit in front of me. Um, did also remember to bring a few gas masks, so it should be good for exploring for a little while. This place looks really eerie at night. So let's go radar tower. So I'm just going to build one roughly around here. Yep. And uh, I've dragged cables all the way out with me. They're just like over there. So I'll just put one down here next to that lovely liz lizard doggo. And I'll just fly back, connect this up, and then deconstruct the other tower. And then keep going. Alrighty. Should be connected. I've got a spider thing chasing me. But uh, yeah, that should be good. Alright, so I'll just take out that other one, and then we can name the radar tower Blue Crater. And we can check how many hard drives are kind of in this area and start getting them. can actually see a few. I can't quite remember the ones that I've already gotten. Some people say that they leave down, uh, you know, a mom next to it to kind of remember which ones they've grabbed, or they'll 
put beacons down. Beacons don't actually display anymore in the game. You can put beacons down, but they just become ma map markers. You don't see the 3D model anymore. I think that'd actually be nice if they left beacons in the game, to be honest, because you could just stick one down next to a hard drive site like that, and then you just know there's a little light on it. So it's like, yep, I've got that one. Um, I suppose you could do it with signs maybe as well. All right. Let's just fly over to this, check that it's... Uh, yeah, it's online. We can see it's got a green light. So this will stay permanently online now. Cool. So yeah, in here we can see that there's 10 hard drives just within this area alone. Now, I'm just going to keep progressing and just keep going in one direction, basically, and then start uncovering more of the map. But it's really handy keeping that powered now, just so we can always know. Yep, there's summer sloop things, there's uh, obviously slugs, whatever else, and hard drives. So it's really good to be able to just see that and have that online all the time. So I'll just interact with it again, enter the name blue crater nice and then when we check our regular map it's just like always online now basically uh, we're right on top of it but if I was out of the way we'd be able to see it let's just collapse this down as well and you can hide then the resources if you don't want to see them unfortunately you have to either hide everything or not I'd like to just hide the ones that are claimed or not you can hover over them to see the ones that aren't it's actually a huge amount of oil out this way as well to the right we have impure Normal, normal, pure, and then pure and pure. And I've marked a lot of slugs around this area, it seems. And a question mark. I must have gotten that one already. I'm sure of it. I've gotten that one. All right, so what I can do now, this thing will only beep if I haven't gotten one. And we can see there's one out this direction. So let's get moving. Okay, it does seem to be the one that's down here. I never got um, a rifle yet. I should really do that. Just for the fun of it. I've never seen it in the game, and I know that they added all these different bullet types and stuff. want to start progressing the mom a little more. So what do we need? Rubber. Oh my god, I've only got 12. It was lucky. Alright, we got our first hard drive. So, we can now just put that... Encased industrial beams. Oh. Weird, they have the standard, like, fix-it box thing. That usually looks like hub parts. Um, so let's go, mom. Pop that down here. Hard drive, scan. Alright, ten minutes. You can take that away, and we'll just get to it when we're done. What else is here? Some computers, some screws. There's some wire in the water. Might just leave that. Alright, so we could take this out. I don't see anything. There was one up this way, and there's also a slug right in front of me. So we'll just go this way, I guess, and start flying our way up. Yep, there we go. Stuck on one of those coral pillar things. I've got enemies all around us. I actually didn't really bring any health with me, but I have a, a couple medical inhalers. Yeah, I've only got two. Oh, sh I'm sure I'll be fine. Uh, Alright, so we have to go grab that one. Let's go take him out. Alright, good. What do we got? Heavy modular frames. I'll take them. Computers. Cable. Oh, not enough room now. I'm, I'm backed up. That's alright. Alright, let's go climb up that thing. Alright, ooh, it took 12 quick wire. Luckily, I thought I had way more than that, but I've only got 60. Okay, again, getting pretty lucky. Haven't hit something that I couldn't use yet. Oh, also, I just realized I'm just gonna throw away some screws. Got no room for an extra hard drive. Alright, that's two. Uh, okay, let's just keep going. So, where are we now? We're up in the northeast. There's like a bridge leading out this way and something else that way. Let's just go out that way as well. Uh, this place looks. Awesome. Haven't seen this area before. It's kind of like, um, karst mountains, in a way. These, like, irregular spires. Oh, we got a signal. Somewhere over there. Oh, there we go. We can see it straight away. 
Hopefully no enemies on this little pillar. No, it looks good. <laughs> Alright, man. Heavy modular frames again. What do we got? Oh, motors. But I got it. 30 motors. Damn, we're getting really lucky with these. Haven't seen anything that's like too high level or like some... Sometimes you come across them where there's items that you don't even... Can't even produce them yet. Ah, uh, right. Nice. Nailed it. So, yeah, let's just keep going a bit more north now until we find another signal. I'm just trying to see a way out of this place. I guess I could probably make that all the way over there. I hope so. Oh my god, it's getting really dark and gray. The blood swamps, is it? I don't know the names of any of these places, but that's what I would call it. So where are we going? We've got something in this direction. Let's just fly over that way for a sec. Oh, I can see it. It's right there. Oh, but we've got lots of um, gas things. And some enemies. Let's dance. Okay, I'll see you later. <laughs> Activate gas mask. Oh, he just... I was going to say he destroyed my berries. Actually, would like to eat them if I could. Alright, good. That wasn't too bad. So let's have a look at what we got. Ne oh my god, it needs 200 megawatts of power. Fuck, 200 is quite a lot. Um, could we do that? Maybe. How many biomass burners is 200? I think each one gives you 30, right? 30 megawatts. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21? So we need 7. And then to divide up everything. Okay, I'll build 7. Alright, I think I've done it. I basically- I just realized as well, you can blow these guys up, can't you? So I could have just got rid of the gas as well if I really needed to, but it's- it's all good. Um, I think we're set up with enough power now. I just need to turn it on. Um... Okay, I think that's it, right? Let's see. Yep. Ugh. Alright, third hard drive. Fourth one in total, I guess. And then we could just literally just delete all of this, take it with us. Alright, sorry about that. I just got rid of all the biomass burners. We don't need them there anymore. There was just a little bit of inventory management. I'm full up and it was creating crates for me because I've picked up a bunch of stuff from around here that is also filling up my inventory all the time. So, well, we should be done here. We can just get moving now again. Hard drives. There's another one somewhere just over there. Ooh, there's a blue slug right down here as well. Got a bunch of these now. Don't really need them to be. I've got like 30 um, power shards. Oh, there it is. Oh my god. Oh my god. Fuck that. That thing is fucking huge. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look at that. So gross. So gross. Breathe. Just breathe. Oh my god. It farts. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, okay, let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> oh no. Oh my god, he's chasing. He's chasing. Alright, we'll come back to this place a little later. Maybe when I get the gun, I could get up higher or something and shoot him from a distance. The amount of damage he did to me in one hit there. Got it. <laughs> <sighs> that was terrifying. Look at him go! Oh my god! <laughs> that is mental! Man, this chill music is not doing it justice. I was genuinely freaked out. Genuinely freaked out. It's still chasing me! Look at how big it is! It's decept- Oh my- Nope. Hey, there's another one right there. Go to that. 
Must be something... Well, I was gonna say, must be something good in that drop pod, but they all just have hard drives, I guess. I was gonna say. Oh, hello. No, little friend! Oh. <laughs> Let's soak in the scenes for a second. I gotta say, it's ugly. It's ugly AF out there. Alright, what does it need? Computers, no problem. Oh, by the way, I think our first hard drive is done, so we can check it out. Um, let's just build a mom. Let's see what we got. Here we go. We have diluted fuel. It'll take a heavy oil residue, mix it with water inside a blender, and pop out fuel. Well, we're going to clean up some heavier oil residue pretty soon. The other one is alternative turbo, f turbo blend fuel. Take in fuel, take in heavy oil residue, mix it with sulfur and petroleum coke, and then get turbo fuel? No, I don't think so. That seems really not good. This one's kind of interesting too. Steel mixed with wire, making rotors. That does seem like a simpler rotor. Let me just have a look at how we make rotors right now. Just using iron. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'll go with the diluted fuel then. That seems good. Alright, scan the next one. And then we're going to start making our way east. Or sorry, west. I could even put down another radar and just temporarily power it just to uncover the map maybe. I could do that right here. Or just fly up a little bit, get some clearer terrain. Not that it matters. I'm just trying to see where I could even go to get up here. That is a massive tree, by the way. Man, this is like, if anyone's played Total War Warhammer, or knows a little bit of the Warhammer lore, it reminds me of like the Wood Elves forests at the lore, and they have these like gigantic trees. They have these very, very like sporadic leaves that just barely cover the sunlight. Or allow for a little, sorry, the opposite really, allow for very little sunlight to come through, I mean. Alright, let's dance. Where's your friend? Alright, good. I didn't want to have to do that, but you gave me no choice. You know, I'm just trying to get some cinematics, make it look cool, make it look... ...immersive. I'm getting attacked by hogs left, right, and center. This place looks awesome, doesn't it? I'll put some of that biomass back in there. And that should just power it for a moment, just so we can see what's around here. Oh, wow. So, we have lots of quartz, caterium ore, pretty much a lot of everything, right? Except oil. Oh no, there is even oil on the very edge. So we've got sulfur, limestone, bauxite. Lots of bauxite in the center of the map here. So I'm going to move, follow the river maybe about down to here. Maybe build this tower again. Alright, we got the signal of another one. Here we are. Pretty sure I was being chased by something. Yeah course. A couple of hogs. No big deal. Sorry, it's so hard to see. Oh my god. Don't know if there's a big one or not. Kind of sounds like he is. Another one? Or is it just him? I think that's it. Alright, let's check it out. Uh, needs 50 megawatts. Okay, that's not too bad. That's just two biomass burners. All right, there we go. Two biomass burners, one pole connected to the drop pod. All right, that's four. Oh, is there such an urge to pick stuff up? My inventory is just completely full. All right, let's just take this stuff away. And let's keep going. See so yeah, further this way. Alright, I've just picked up the signal yet again of another one. This place looks so cool as well, by the way. The lighting is doing wonders right now. Uh, sounds like it's right in front of me somewhere. Oh yeah, I see it actually, just over there. Alright, we got four, five, six hogs maybe? Oh my god. Let's see if we can separate them somehow. Take a quick heal. 
I think there's two more. <sighs> I'm sorry, friend. Uh, so... Now, I consumed all my medicinal inhalers but, inhalers, but I don't seem to have room for anything else. Maybe that was on the body slot? Oh, no, it was in the hand slot, was it? Okay. Oh, I put the boombox in the hand slot. We can take up some pale berries. Eat some of those if we need them. All right, let's see what we got. What do we? What the hell is that? A battery. Ooh. I got to take it, don't I? Surely. Got to take something that I've never seen before. Uh, what can we get rid of? 12 circuit boards. Uh, one motor, no problem. Cool. Has the uh the other one finished yet? A oh, minute twenty to go. Okay. All right, easy peasy. Let's keep going. Anything else that I want to grab here? Heavy modular frames? No, just regular ones. All right. So where are we now on the map? So I've made it basically. So my journey so far has been starting down here, pushing up and curving around to the left. Actually curving up to here, right? And then bringing myself back down. So somewhere about here, I'll make another... In fact, I might just put a marker on that. Yeah, so new marker. I'll just head to that marker, then we can make another radar tower, uncover a lot of the map, and uh, see where we go from there. All right, cool. Another big, massive part of the map uncovered. Again, we can see the rest of that box site. More crude oil further north. Big ass cliff that kind of stops you from getting up there. I think that's the pink forest area, isn't it? I think so. Let's see, I'll have to try and find a little pillar or something we can kind of climb our way up, and float through that area. Doesn't seem to be too many deposits up there. I think they said as well, isn't the center of the map going to change or something? So I'd be hesitant to build anything up there right now. But I guess we'll see what they say. All right, cool. We'll just take this down and keep moving. So yeah, tricky. I have to like get up there. <laughs> and I guess it is the pink forest. We can see some of those pink trees. It looks like there's a really easy way up, but maybe through this area. Let's try this. Oh yeah, I just remembered. I forgot to actually check what we got in the mom. So let's have a look. So, fused quickwire using caterium ingots and copper ingots, producing 90 quickwire per minute. An alternate recipe for motors, which requires crystal oscillators. Can't imagine that's a good thing to do, although... So, it's basically the standard recipe, but they're adding in oscillators to produce way more per minute, I suppose. Um, and then encased industrial pipes. Hmm. I don't know, man. I don't really think any of these are that interesting. I'm just going to go with the quickwire one. Well, actually, I'll go with the encased industrial pipes. Why not? Let's just do that. All right. Next hard drive. Well, well, well. Look where we are. The prettiest place in all of Satisfactory. The Pink Forest. Yeah, it looks fine. It's actually starting to rain a little bit. What's that? Oh, I'm taking radiation damage. Oh, yeah, I can see it. Got just uh, a pile of uranium there on the ground. Don't want to get too close. We'll take a little bit of damage from that. Um, so I'm basically just here on the eastern edge of it. I finally found my way up, and I'm just going to be heading about west, southwest-ish, getting to this lake and going beyond, looking for hard drives the whole time. And then we can put down another radar site. Got a signal. There we go. Right over there. More uranium lying around though as well. Right next to it actually as well. Might be a little too dangerous for me. I don't have any protective gear. Could maybe try and fly in, fly out, see what happens. Repairs needed a supercomputer. Okay, I don't have a supercomputer. Uh, we're actually, the thing I was planning on getting with the high-speed connectors in the chain in the MOM for 
Caterium chain. Um, the supercomputer's in there, so once once we get a few of those high-speed connectors made, which plenty should be made now in the background, we will actually be able to get the recipe for supercomputers. Alright, let's just cross down this way. Wow, this place looks awesome. So nice. I've actually just picked up another signal. Not really sure which direction, though. It's very weak. There we go, somewhere over here. I think I see it. No, I can see... We have a purple slug under the water, it seems like. Oh my god. The movement of the trees makes you think some animal's just going to lunge out of it. Not enough space. Ah, bastard. Um, what can we get rid of? What's really useless? People are screaming at me. Screws. <laughs> Alright, we're good. Well, first off, actually, before I fight him, let me just see what's even needed here. It's a quantum computer, so I can't open it, so I'll leave him be. I'll leave him be. This seems like endgame forest to me. It's all stuff that I don't have. Alright, I need to head south. Back towards the quartz refinery. Oh my god, there's another big berth over there. Yeah, I think I'll be leaving that particular slug alone. Hook these two up. Boom, there we go. Right, we've cleared the entire middle of the map now, straight all the way across. So we're just going to make my way... I'm, I'm going to complete this journey by making my way out to the processing plant and continuing with the next job in the to-do list, which is to figure out the fuel overflow system. Not too much around this area, really. Again, it seems fairly sparse. And, like, really awkward to build in. I don't know really why you'd come here. Other than it looks pretty. I'll give it that. I suppose there's a decent amount of hard drives and things around. Can we check? 15. 94 slugs in this area. I guess it's an exploration zone, mostly. You can obviously clear all the trees if you wanted to, though. Uh, so, let's just check what we got in the mum. So, a crystal computer. Ooh. Made in an assembler. That seems pretty good, using just circuit boards and oscillators. Well, obviously, to make oscillators, though, you need a manufacturer, so it doesn't completely cut out the need for that. Automated miner, a different type of one. <laughs> I think I'm good. And then stitched iron plates, 5.625 per minute. I'll go with the computer. I don't know if I'll necessarily use this recipe, but it's kind of a nice idea. All right, next one's queued up. So I'm going to make my way out west past the quartz refinery, back out to the oil processing plant, and then we can go work on the fuel overflow system. I can see a few more hard drives lying around the place. Could make my way out to that one really quickly. Oh, cool. There's the, uh, the OG coal plant and the coal rig, one of the first ambitious builds that I made. So we're actually so far away right now, we can't even see the water extractors. <laughs> Things aren't loading in at this distance. Oh my god, you can see all the way out to the train station and everything. That's cool. I didn't know you could see that far. Oh my god, I can even see my trucks. <laughs> and the motor factory and the sulfur refinery. God damn. Yeah, we're at a pretty high point in the world. Almost the highest point. Alright, let's just do a quick leap across to here. Oh my god, whoops, I messed that up. I reckon I can glide my way over, get that hard drive, and that should be the last one then. This needs 420 megawatts. I'm just not going to be able to do it. So I'll have to leave it. I came prepared though, but yeah. That's too much power. That needs... That basically, for me anyway, requires setting up... Uh, pulling power from wherever we, you know, generated on the main grid, or setting up, like, coal generators or something. I just can't be bothered. <laughs> What is that? Oh, are we above the quartz thing? Oh, we are, yeah. Oh, cool. Alright, gonna keep going. Make my way up to the old processing plant. 
And wow, here we are, right above Circuit City. It's kind of interesting to end up, like, here. Basically where we started the episode, thinking about it. I'll just glide my way back in, see how many um, high-speed connectors we made. Alrighty, man, what a journey. I'd say that was a pretty successful hunt, though. It got like six, seven hard drives or something, a bunch of um, slugs and stuff. I'm pretty happy with that, what we got, with that haul. Uh, we have 74 connectors. Not gonna lie, that seems kind of low. I was expecting a few hundred, but I suppose it's only like three per minute, so yeah, I guess it makes sense. Yeah, let me just check actually then in the mom, what do I need? What was I looking for? So we still have five minutes to go on that one. Uh, so in Caterium Chain, the so I needed a hundred for Power Pole Mark Three. So not quite yet, but probably by the end of this episode I should be able to do it. And then for this I needed fifty AI limiters and fifty high speed connectors. So I have the high speed connectors. Probably don't have the AI limiters unless I go all the way back to home base and see what we got there. And then if we make some supercomputers, we can access programmable splitters, which is actually something I'm going to need if I ever want to do the Hyperforge I talked about in the previous episode. That Hyperforge is going to be so much easier with blueprints as well, by the way, so holding off for sure until that. I'll be definitely going into experimental. Oh, I just realized we're not getting a plastic. It must um, require a flush. It has been an hour... S oh my god, it's an hour and 20 since I started the recording. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, no plastic here anymore. I think I have to flush it every... I don't know, every like 40 minutes roughly for it to fill up. So it's not like that frequent, but I guess I guess it's pretty frequent. But that's what we're going to fix. That's the next thing. Add fuel overflow system. That's what we're going to be doing next. Alrighty then. Here we are at the oil processing plant. So, fluid flush. So we just drain all that out. That should get the plastic flowing again. That should be the last time I have to do that. We're going to start fixing this place up now. But... If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, we should see plastic rolling along now. Yeah, it literally just gets backed up and has nowhere to go. Okay, so this is going to be kind of an interesting one, just because we did pick up that other diluted fuel recipe, which changes my plans slightly. What does it... Let me just check, actually. What does it make? Was it just regular fuel? Yeah, so using heavy oil residue and water, we make more fuel. 100 fuel per minute, and it uses a blender. Well, I don't have a blender, so I can't really do that right now. So what I'll do is I'll just set up what I was planning on doing originally, which was making a bunch of refineries to do this the standard way. So, let's get started. Um, I basically want to extend out this area, just to kind of come have a bit more of a workspace to work with. I think actually I'll just really quickly reintroduce this factory to people so that people are caught up on the layout and what's going on here. Just very quickly. Let's just run inside. So this is the main entrance, right? Main entrance, then we have a truck station that's no longer in use. So you come into the main entrance, we've got a sorting and packaging room. Don't worry about that, we'll look at that later. If we go down along this way, we have the main refinement room. So what ha Well, actually, let's just go to the first extraction room. So oil is coming into this room here, oil extraction. So there's one of our oil extractors, and that's pumping along under the floors and into the, refi the refinement room. That comes along through this pipe into all of these buffers, which then goes and gets spread into all of these machines here. Now this is when, this is my starting refinery, right? So I've got two that are doing fuel. These two are doing fuel. These two I think are doing plastic. These two are doing rubber. And then this is like a closed system here with these and then these two machines. So the residue that's created, the polymer resin, is mixed with water to produce a little bit of extra plastic. And then the heavy oil residue that comes from some of the other refineries are using are being are producing fuel. Okay? So that's that area. The other area then is a kind of a separate area. So a different fuel node or a different crude oil node feeds into these three. And then this feeds along into 20 refineries. So this is the second time I built into this place. I scaled up the operation big time. So we have 20 refineries, all doing the same thing, all making plastic. But that's outputting heavy oil residue as a byproduct uh, beneath us. So there's two 
heavy oil residue pipes flowing along just underneath us and then they cut to the left and they feed into these buffers. And it was a temporary thing for me to say, I'll flush them just to drain it out. But what we can do now is we have the power now to say like, well, let's, you know, figure out what we want to actually do with these. Uh, so let's just get rid of this, 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 and this. Okay, good. I seem to have the room in my inventory for that. I was worried it would create a... No, it didn't. Something I'm just going to do really quickly as well. The mom... Is that done yet? Eight seconds. Good timing. And then the crafting bench. Just build this. Let's just make the rest of... The power shards. So we had three purple slugs. Five for each one. So we now got... 50 power shards. I actually don't know how many you can have in a stack. I'm guessing 100 or 200. So we've got 60 now there, and then here we'll just get three extra ones. Alright, cool. Let's check the recipe. So, uh, a silicon circuit board using copper sheets, silica, outputting 12.5 per minute. That seems pretty good. Not liking the look of that. This is the, came up before, obviously, the oscillator with the um, stator and rotor. And then something for extra canisters, I'm good. An iron canister, it's kind of cool though. Yeah, I'll go with this one. It might actually, uh, it's funny because I've gotten recipes that would completely change the circuit board factory I just spent ages building, but okay. Uh, let's put another one into it. We've got three more to go. And I could do a bit more exploration as well. Let me know if you like seeing the exploration in the episodes or if you want me to do more on my own. Um, I think it's kind of cool to show it off. At least for the, when you're there for the first time. If I go back to an area I've been to, and we've got a radar tower up like down here, and I know there's hard drives around here, I could just go collect those ones, you know? Um, Alright, cool. That's all running. This is then filling up. So, let's just delete this entire wall here. What I was initially thinking is, because the refineries that I'm planning on building, I guess I'll talk through it a bit better. Let's just grab one refinery here. So, we want to put in, use, do something with the heavy oil residue that we're getting, right? So, what we can do with that is make anything that has residual in the name, pretty much. Or use sink petroleum coke into it, that's what people were telling me to do. What we're going to try and do, instead, is make fuel from it. So, with residual fuel, we need 60 heavy oil residue. So, what's happening over there is we've got 20 refineries that are doing plastic. Regular plastic. So that's making 10 per machine. So there's 200 heavy oil residue coming out of that area. So 200 is flowing along this pipe every minute, just filling these things up. So 200. And this takes, what was it? 60, right? Residual fuel takes 60 heavy oil residue. So, well, simply put, it's 200 divided by 60 is going to be 3.333. So, we'll build four. Four of these refineries should handle all of the heavy oil residue that we have. But it creates more of a logistical problem than it might seem. Because then it's like, well, you need somewhere for the fuel to go. Otherwise, that will get backed up. Backing that up, stopping plastic. Which is why it's a really elegant solution to just say, we'll make petroleum coke and we'll just sink it. Problem solved. But I'm going to try and do it the hard way and figure out a way to handle the extra fuel. Now, ultimately, what I've, I'll get rid of these lights as well. It's nice as they are. If there's no wall here, they're not really needed. Okay, cool. So, this original line, which I just showed you before, is the orange line. It's the fuel line. Fuel is going out. And it goes out along here and out into that, you know, into the flooring. And it comes into this room. This is the turbo fuel room. So, turbo fuel takes in regular fuel. Mixes it with compact coal and outputs turbo fuel. Pretty straightforward. So what I need to do, really quickly, I haven't done these numbers before, so I need to figure out. We've got one, two, and then if I'm not mistaken, this one is also making fuel. They're all making 40, so that's 4, 8, 12. 120 fuel per minute that we need to handle. Because it doesn't go anywhere else. It just goes into this room, I, I believe, now. 120 fuel. This is 22.5. So if I go 120 divided by 22.5, that's five machines. So that's basically what I've got. I've got five machines in here. And there's a little bit of excess. So that actually means if I was to check these machines, I'm guessing that they're not going to be at 100% efficiency. 
That one's at 96, so you can tell, tell something happened to it where it went wrong. And then this one, 96 as well. So there's just a little bit of, it's not fully operating the way it should be. It slows down every now and then for that 0.333 extra little bit of fuel that's not going into a machine, I'm guessing, right? And getting backed up somewhere. We're not packaging it, we're not doing anything with it. It's just going nowhere. Uh, so the machines have to stop. So if I'm going to add a bunch of new machines that are all putting more and more fuel out, they're all just going to get backed up and not do anything. I have to expand the turbo fuel. So to do that, I'm just going to expand out this way. This room is pretty small. We've only got five machines. We could definitely add more to it, so why not? And ultimately, they're going to be producing power, so they'll pay for themselves long term. Now, I have no idea what that's doing. I'm just going to cut that and hope not everything breaks down. <laughs> all right. A little bit of uranium over there that I have to kind of stay away from as well. So effectively what I'm just going to do is grow this facility to accommodate all the extra fuel that I'm going to produce from the heavy oil residue. This will be the heavy oil residue pipe. I'll color them in a moment. So that's going to connect to the pipe that's coming out this way. Uh, so just sort of temporarily we will put a junction thing down here she doesn't need to go there it needs to go on this line okay all right so our heavy oil is nowhere to go so I'll just let it keep filling that up for a moment All right, so that's the heavy oil residue is then going to be flowing along and into all of these refineries, okay? Simple enough. Some, for now, it's just some of that's going into this fluid buffer. Just empty that out. All right, cool. So they're all going to be doing residual fuel. Copy and paste. So we'll copy that, paste it there, paste it there, and paste it there. All right, so there we have it. So we've got four additional refineries now that are going to be handling heavy oil residue and pumping out fuel instead. That fuel line is now joining onto the original fuel line that I had here anyway. The original fuel line was doing 120 fuel per minute. We're adding now an additional 180, I want to say. No, sorry, 160. We're adding an additional 160, 4, 8, 12, 16. And that's going to give us 280 in total. So 280 is going to be coming out of this pipe now in future. Uh, the pipes can handle 300, so it's no problem for the pipe. But 280 fuel then needs to be processed inside of the... It depends on which part of this room you're in, but the fuel refinement area, right? So we've got one, two, three, four, five doing turbo fuel right now. So the standard turbo fuel recipe that we have is making 18.7. It's taking 22.5 fuel in. What was the other one? Oh, we didn't end up picking it, right? Yeah. Oh, that's fair enough. So, uh, 22.5 fuel. So, 280 divided by 22.5. It's going to be 12.44. So, we need 13 turbo fuel refineries. It's quite a lot. Let's do it. We can just keep adding them onto the side. We'll leave the buffers where they are. Why the hell not? Is this the right facing direction? No. We want it to face out that way. Although, actually... Yeah, it's going to be a little confusing for the pipes, this, this layout. So I think I will probably get rid of the buffers. I'm a little worried now because fuel power might die for a moment. Power might die everywhere, actually, if I don't get this up and running correctly. We don't have a backup Jenny. Alrighty, so I'm just back down at the sulfur refinery for two reasons. One, I ran out of motors. I need to build more refineries, so I have to get more motors out of the motor factory, but two, this is where we make compacted coal. So I was just wondering, if we need 12, really 13 refineries, making turbo fuel, uh, we're gonna need a lot more compact coal as well. So turbo fuel requires 15 per minute. So 15 times 13, we need 195 compact coal really should have written all this down. Actually, I'm going to write it down. So 195 compact coal. Okay, that's written down. So 
Seems like we're actually lacking a little bit here. We're at 70% for sulfur. Sulfur's not coming up very fast. Let's fix this issue. Why is that? Sulfur Mark II. We can always um, just massively improve that, right? With the shards that we have. Let's just do it. Let's just max it out. And then give it the fastest belts in the land. Okay, so it's Mark Ford out of its mind. Alright, I'll just make sure that continues the whole way through. Should be no reason that that's slowing down. Just must be a slow belt. Cause the issue. I think that should help. Hopefully there's no slow belts in the middle of these things. I, I doubt it. So that's full up now. And so is that. Alright, so hopefully we can bring this up to 100%. Anyways, so we need 195 compact coal. So how many do we produce? We produce 25 with one machine. So 195 divided by 25 is we need 7.8 machines, which means we need 8 machines. So, 8 machines... <laughs> How many have we got? We got three. All right, so we need five more. So eight machines, eight times 25. That means we need 200 coal. Just writing it down, and then 200 sulfur. Okay, 200 coal, 200 sulfur. Let me just quickly check how much do we get out of this particular node? 300 per minute. So that's fine. Obviously we're using sulfur in another thing as well. We'll just check that in a second. Why is there gaps on that, by the way? How fast is the Mark 6 belt? Sorry, Mark 4. 480. Oh, okay. That makes sense then. Alright, cool. So the other things that use sulfur are these. So let me just... 15. What is this making as well, by the way? Black powder, is it? And we don't use that for anything, right? I might just turn that off. We just have things full, and they don't do anything other than get go into the awesome sink. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's just do that. Alright, so that way we can just switch these to do the same thing. So compact coal. There you go. Oh, weird. It's just dropped stuff right in front of me. No space for coal. Oh my god. Alright, let me just put down a box. Get rid of some of the stuff. Just really quickly. I'm carrying like a huge amount of heavy modular frames for no reason, really. Alright, back in you go. So yeah, let's just change this recipe as well. It's so annoying that it kicks out the base goods because it's the same base goods for the different recipe. So, we've needed we need eight machines. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we just add one more to the other side, uh, we're golden. Pretty much. Until we need more black powder sometime. God, I love it when it just, it's just that easy to build. It's just like, oh, just add another machine, no problem. <laughs> right? Easy. So you just need power, and you're good. Compact coal. So that compact coal just needs to go into a merger. And then I need to hook the other ones up to this as well, don't I? Yep. Alright, good. I'll speed up these belts in a moment also. So, and now that we're not making black powder anymore, do I have room in my inventory to get rid of that? I do. Let's just get rid of all this setup here. Alright, cool. There we go. A little spaghetti, but nothing too crazy, really. So, Let's just have a look at what belt speed we need. 
25, 50, so 100. So we only need a belt speed of about, I don't know. Let's just put it up to three. Just to make sure we don't have any issues. Okay. Then what we'll do is we'll switch this now to... That is already the fastest, just in case with this one. Just make that the same situation. Alright, great. So our end result here is that we now have eight assemblers doing compact coal, which should be enough for the 195 that we wanted, right? We needed two... We're making 200. Of course, this then goes into a big container, another container, and then into the actual storage of... The freight platform and then a train comes by and collects it and delivers it. It's all backed up at the moment, which is great, but it won't be in future depending on the, um, the consumption rate. Now, before we finish this, we just need to see that we are producing enough that's going into these. 295 parts per minute. We just might as well increase that all the way to 360. Uh, we can go faster if we want to. 480? Let's do 480 and we'll just increase this belt to be the fastest we have. It already is. So that's good. All right, I'll just make these nice and fast belts. We're actually out of industrial beams, so I'll probably get to that on my own. That whole factory is offline right now because it's just backed up. It's, it was never set up with an awesome sink. So that means that, yeah, we're producing more than enough coal. Uh, we just have to make sure it's getting to where it needs to go, which it should be now. Good, right? I think so. That should be 200 compact coal now that we're making, sending it all out there. Not making any black powder anymore, but again, I've never had a use for it. I'm sure it's probably used for something in the future, but at the moment, like I had it making nobelisks, but I don't need anything else from it right now. Let's just sort all our inventory and let's just pick up anything I've dropped, so... I'm gonna get rid of the coal that I'm carrying. Raw resources don't need it. Alright, so the original reason for coming down here in the first place was actually to go get motors. So that's what I'm going to do. Just run over to the motor factory, pick some up, and get back on a train and get back heading towards... Alright, so I'm finally back at the turbo fuel section of the oil processing plant where we're taking in fuel on this yellow line and then feeding it into all of these red machines to put out a red line of turbo fuel. Power is actually probably going to die soon enough if I don't do something. In fact, while I'm explaining things, I may just hook this back up really quickly down here just so fuel continues to flow for a moment. Um, so effectively, God damn, I got too close to that radiation. So effectively what's been going on is because we have this excess of heavy oil residue that we have to keep flushing, we have to put it into something or we could have turned it into petroleum coke like people said, but I've chosen to do it the hard way. So what I'm doing is we're making it into fuel, but that fuel has to go somewhere. So I'm turning it into turbo fuel. But in order to sustain making that turbo fuel, I needed more compact coal. So we went down to compact coal. We boosted its production massively. We should have enough now. So we need to make 13 machines, all making turbo fuel, to then kind of satiate the demand to get rid of all that heavy oil residue. However, the turbo fuel has to go somewhere too. So that means I got to beef up the size of power production considerably because we make... We use the turbo fuel, but we only use tiny little bits of it in each one of these. So I'm going to need like another 30 or something fuel generators, but that's going to give us the power we need to go much further along tier 7 uh, for a while before obviously then trying to do nuclear later on. So it's all necessary stuff, I guess, but I just wanted to kind of re-explain the situation with that. So hopefully the fuel is now flowing again. That should be okay for a while. Let's just cut this. Let's start laying these out. So we've already got five, so that's six, seven, eight, in the wrong place. Eight, nine, ten, and thirteen. Thirteen. God damn. All right, so we need to now find a way to divide all this up. I'm going to stop feeding the compact coal in, even. Let's say forget that. And we're just going to... If I had blueprints, this would be nice, but unfortunately we do not. Although refineries are probably too big for the blueprint thing actually at the moment as well. Someone had a great idea actually in, on Reddit. I think I saw a comment. Oh, no, no, no. It was a top comment in one of the videos uh, talking about the blueprints, which is if the chimney stocks are protruding out of the blueprint, how cool it would be if the chimneys just like when you build it, like when you build one of these, you see the chimney just like unfold, like modularly like rise out. And that way 
you know, thematically you could say they fit inside of a blueprint designer until they're powered on. That is a pretty nice solution, I think. Um, but anyway, they could obviously just not include that in the bounding box or something, but if you wanted to kind of keep it in lore, in world, uh, you could have that, and it would look pretty satisfying, I would imagine. Alright, cool, we'll cut that away. So, effectively, we just need to extend this pipe all along here and hope for the best. <laughs> Um, it is pretty far back, though. Do I need to bring it forward? I could bring it forward. Would that help anything, I wonder? Not really. I guess I'll just keep it where it is, then. Alright, so we just lay these out in a line. Alright, so there we go. So that is a series of refineries, all doing turbo fuel. I actually haven't hooked them up to power just yet. Coal is still coming down here, compact coal, just flowing along here and then going down the manifold. So the upstairs portion of this factory is going to change in the next episode. So I'm just doing that temporarily, but I'm going to have a logistics floor up here that sorts out a bunch of different things like the plastic and different things that go up to the train platform above. And I'm try I've am i actually experimented a lot trying to make it look like a ventilation area, but I can't really find a good, I guess, prop that makes it look like, you know, this these chimney stacks are being vented out a wall. You could use the hypertube walls that look like they're sucking things out, but I don't know, it looks kind of weird. Alrighty, the pipes are now pretty much all hooked up. Still need to color some of them really quickly. Um, so basically just need to create a fluid buffer, store up a lot of turbo fuel in some giant fluid buffer, and then send it into the fuel generator rooms, of which we're gonna have multiple now. I think at the moment I've got 18 uh, fuel generators. So I haven't worked that out yet. I'll work that out in the next episode, how many we're gonna need to handle all the turbo fuel we're creating. Let's just extend this out even further. And then there's two more crude oil deposits here, so there's so much more we could do as well. I'm trying to think big, but I'm like, oh my god. There's another deposit over there, and another one there, and another one do over there. So, uh, yeah, we can do a lot. And we have the, obviously this one here that needs to be kind of folded into the factory to look a little bit nicer. Uh, okay, so let's go with fluid... Whoops. Industrial fluid buffer. Just put one, like, right here. 2400 should be plenty. Extend that out. Oh yeah, we've batteries, don't we? The batteries are probably keeping me going. And then this is going to come out and join that other one at the far end. So is this in the center? It is. Alright, cool. Our red line. And then our yellow trim. That's the final thing. And then we just have to hook it up to power and it should work. <laughs> we'll see how the coal handles itself or holds up. Alright, so now we just need to hook all of these up and that should be it. So what this effectively is going to do is change it so we don't have to flush heavy oil anymore, but we do have to flush turbo fuel until we send it into enough power generators so it all gets consumed. So we're, we sort of just passed the book in a really complicated way, but we set ourselves up to have a lot of power, which is obviously what we're going to need in the future anyway. So let's just paste the settings here, paste, and hopefully compact coal is now making its way into these machines. It is, fuel is flooding in, boom, all right, good. So I expect to see this filling up nice and fast. Now, one, uh, one last thing I didn't actually check is 18.75, 18.75 times 13 machines, 243, so one pipe can still handle it. Now, one of these is going to have to be underclocked. Again, I'll work out the math just after this episode and explain it in the next one, uh, just because I'm really short in time now. I've actually had to do multiple recordings as well. Oh, we could just see some of the fuel generators have been like ticking off a little bit there. It's okay, they should all come back online, I have no doubt. The turbo fuel should be fine. Just did it in enough time. That's what buffers are for. But I deleted the buffers straight away, because they were in the way of where I needed to go. So, we'll see how it all shakes out. But, yep, coal is making its way in. It'll be interesting to see if these can all be powered on with the amount of coal. Oh, actually, the very last thing then would be, we are definitely bringing in enough coal. It's just backed up, because the belts are slow. So, if I just improve the belt speed, we should see this uh, traveling much quicker. So let's just do that, and then we have to improve the elevator speed as well, of course. So let's mark forward out of its mind. Let's just climb up here. 
good. And Mark IV. Okay. So it's coming down pretty fast. We just need to fix that last elevator. And now we are fellowing. No breaks in the chain. That's what I like to see. Alright, good. So that's turbo fuel. Again, massive turbo fuel expansion. We had five, now we've got 13, so more than double. And that's us producing roughly, because we're not fully producing that, probably about 230 per minute, something along those lines. I'll, again, I'll do the math uh, next time. But yep, this is just draining out actually, because it's obviously filling into the machine. So, really quickly, I suppose it wouldn't take long just to check. This requires four and a half per minute. So let's say 240 divided by 4.5. Oh my god, so we can have probably about 50 fuel generators. And how much fuel do, or power do they make? 150. Wow. Uh, that's some quick maths right there, but I can't do that. 50 times 150, 7,500. It's alright. Currently we're getting... Uh, 2,700. So, again, tripling up the almost triple the value for energy production. I gotta add lights in and stuff in this place. This is the room that the last room that was actually done. So there you go. I'm gonna have to leave it there. A lot was done this episode. So that is adding a fuel overflow system. It's almost fully synced up. That should keep us producing plastic constantly now. It should not stop. It should not get backed up. One little issue that is a result of this without me creating some sort of overflow system for plastic is that if plastic doesn't leave the station for whatever reason, then power could die. <laughs> so it's a really interesting cause and effect, the logistics that we've kind of created here or that the game kind of creates for you, I suppose. Um, so I'll just empty out this buffer. So in case it needs to store more in there, it can. But that can probably go. Is this, oh, these aren't turned on yet. Oh my God, how could I forget? So the extra fuel. Uh, yeah, let's get that done. So which one was the power line? The power line is on the Power line's down here. Let's just hook one up in a lazy way. Ah. Okay. Is that it? We're all powered on now. So now we're producing the extra fuel. Okay, cool. <laughs> we're not even doing the um, one of the base ingredients there. I'm surprised they turned on at all. But there's obviously a backlog. Sorry, let me just get to where the fuel is again. Hundred percent efficiency. Love to see it. Let's just check one of these ones. That's all the way at the very end, actually. So that's good. One of these is the new ones, right? This is a new one. I think. This one definitely is. Yeah, I mean they've got tons of fuel. Good. I ain't got no problems then. Seventy-one percent efficient, but it's obviously just going to build and build and build. Let's just check this one to be sure. Hundred percent. Yep, it's got what it needs. Good. Compact coal flowing down. Excellent. So obviously having this run for a while, it'd be interesting to see if the train is delivering enough compact coal. It'd be interesting to see if my fuel solution works out. And then we just need to make sure it's all being consumed in power generators and fuel generators. And then um, just in case, you know, create an overflow, overflow system into an awesome sink with plastic or something like that, for instance. Because we do depend on plastic production to make heavy oil residue, to make fuel, to make turbo fuel, <laughs> to make power. Interesting. All right, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you want to support the channel directly, you can click the join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. You'll also get exclusive access to my Discord where there's dedicated channels for each series I'm doing. And it's a great place just to meet others and make some friends.